Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. On the subject of Arnie, I think you'll agree he looks very festive today, and although it was very hard to get this jumper on him, I think he looks very good in it. Sorry there wasn't a midweek video this week, but as some of you may know from my community post, I was ill, as my nephew gave me the flu, but I'm feeling a lot better now, and I should have two videos for you next week. But as it is Christmas, I thought I'd go for a Christmassy themed video, and I'll be going through just a few of the fascinating creatures of the Arctic. The Arctic is located at the northernmost part of the planet, which is famously where Santa lives. The Arctic the also includes northern parts of many countries such as Canada, Russia, the USA, Greenland, Norway, Finland, Sweden and Iceland. Its landscape is usually very unforgiving and can hit temperatures as low as minus 70 degrees Celsius. Despite its freezing cold temperatures, approximately 4 million people live here and of course so do some very hardy animals. I'll be going through just a few facts and stories about these animals today and we'll start off with the walrus. The walrus is a very lonely marine mammal as it's the only member in its family. They are characterised by their prominent tusks and whiskers and also there are size. Adult males can weigh over two tons, and the only other living pinnipeds that can beat this size are the two species of elephant seals. Walruses tend to thrive in shallow waters above the continental shelves, where they feed on a variety of crustaceans, mollusks, soft corals and sea cucumbers. These shallower waters provide protection from the rough seas and also from predators. Both male and female walruses have large tusks, and they have many different purposes. They can be used to haul themselves out of the water onto sea ice, and they're also used to fight other walruses and to defend against predators. Mother walruses are very protective of their young and are known to be able to pick up their young with their flippers and hold it to their chest. Atlantic walruses prefer to rest ashore, normally in very large groups. These large groups of walruses are highly susceptible to disturbance and noise and stampedes can often occur when walruses get spooked. This behaviour was brought to the eyes of the world in the Our Planet documentary where walruses could be seen jumping off cliffs. Part of the reason behind these tragic scenes is global warming because as there's less sea ice there's less space for these walruses to pull themselves out of the water and this leads to them being clumped up on cliffs. One very famous walrus has hit the news in the past year and his name is Wally. Wally is also known as the wandering walrus as he has been spotted in many countries around Europe. It's very rare for walruses to go this far south and he surprised a few people by clambering into their boats. He became a local celebrity in many places that he went and was last spotted in Iceland and I have to say he's a very photogenic walrus. But our next arctic species is the snowy owl. The snowy owl is a large white owl of the true owl family and is native to the arctic regions of both North America America, Europe and Russia. It is the only species of owl with a largely white plumage and this helps it blend in with its cold frigid home. The snowy owl's behaviour also makes it unique among owls, as most owls are nocturnal but the snowy owl is often active during the day especially in the summertime. Snowy owls generally feed on tundra dwelling lemmings as well as other small mammals and northerly water birds. As they need a lot of insulation from the arctic temperatures, snowy owls have a lot of feathers and these feathers contribute to it being one of the heaviest owl species in North America. They even have feathers on their feet which makes them look like they're wearing feathery slippers. Snowy owls are known for being very aggressive in self-defence and will even dive bomb other species if they get close to their nesting grounds. They're known to dive bomb humans and even attack arctic wolves if they get too close. One of the most famous snowy owls in the world has to be Hedwig. Although Hedwig was meant to be a female, the actors playing her in the movie were males and one of the males playing Hedwig was also one of the very first cast members to be chosen. But some would call our next species the king of the arctic and it is the polar bear. The polar bear is a hypercarnivorous bear whose native range lies largely within the arctic circle. It is the largest extant species of bear as well as the largest extant land carnivore. An adult male can weigh around 700 kilograms which gives it enough power to take on a large number of marine mammals. Although most polar bears are born on land, they spend most of their time on the sea ice where their diet primarily consists of ringed and bearded seals. Although we know polar bears as prolific hunters, they're not very efficient as less than 2% of polar bear hunts are successful. In many cases they are left to scavenge carcasses or settle for small small mammals and birds. As I've covered in previous videos, although polar bears evolved from brown bears around 150,000 years ago, they are still able to interbreed to create pizzly bears. These pizzly bears can be found both in the wild and in captivity and still fascinate people around the globe. But our next arctic species is the reindeer. Now I couldn't do a Christmassy themed video without including the reindeer, but some people know this species as the caribou. In fact the reindeer and the caribou are the same animal, but in Europe they are usually called reindeer and in North America they are usually called caribou. The term reindeer is often used for domestic domesticated caribou and the term caribou is often used for wild reindeer. Although this may sound very confusing, there's no getting away from the fact that reindeer are very impressive animals. Reindeer are very unique members of the deer family as both males and females grow antlers. The males primarily use their antlers for battle whereas females use them to defend their food. Males usually shed their antlers in late fall or early winter just after the rut. But the females tend to keep their antlers during the winter as they need to defend their food during pregnancy. As well as being very unique among deer, they're also very unique among mammals. Although some believe 
they can fly, they've been proven to have another superpower. It was recently discovered that reindeer are some of the only animals that can see ultraviolet light. This helps them spot food and predators, and helps them see more clearly in the blaring light of the Arctic. Some reindeer are also known to feed on large amounts of lichen, which is also known as reindeer moss. This lichen is high in carbohydrates, and contains a fair amount of vitamins and protein, Then this may be one of the reasons why they have magical powers. But our next Arctic species is the Arctic fox. This is a relatively small species of fox that is common throughout the Arctic tundra. It's very well adapted to living in cold environments, and is known for its thick warm fur. Although their fur is famously white in some cases, its colour changes with the seasons. In winter they sport fluffy white coats that blend in with the snow, but in the summer they shed these coats and dawn a brownish or greyish coloured coat. This helps them blend in with the rocks in the summertime, which helps them to catch their prey. In most cases this prey is small mammals such as lemmings, voles and hares, but they are also known to take birds and their eggs, as well as fish. But as these foxes are relatively small for canids, reaching a maximum size of around 70 centimetres, they are targeted by many of the predators, as golden eagles, arctic wolves, polar bears, wolverines, red foxes and grizzly bears are all known to target the arctic fox. But this tiny fox has to be one of the cutest species that can be found in the arctic. But our next species is the very plump bearded seal. The seal got its name because of its very abundant whiskers. When dry these whiskers curl very elegantly and can look like a very well maintained beard. The bearded seal is the largest of the arctic seals and can weigh as much as 300 kilograms. These seals tend to prefer shallow coastal areas where they feed on a variety of clams, squid and fish. Bearded seals are known for being very vocal and they can create sounds that can be heard up to 12 miles away and they also sing songs underwater to attract mates. Personally I think this is a very eerie yet beautiful song and it would be an incredible yet slightly scary experience to hear it in the wild. But our final arctic creature is the arctic wolf. The arctic wolf is a subspecies of grey wolf native to the high arctic tundra of Canada's Queen Elizabeth Islands. Arctic wolves have almost completely white fur all year round. This helps them blend in with their snowy environments and means it's incredibly hard for their prey to spot them. They generally live in packs of anything from 2 to 20 individuals. These packs have a highly complex social order but is normally led by a dominant male and a dominant female. These wolves are known to have incredible stamina and will often hunt down their prey until they can't run anymore. In many cases this prey is musk oxen and arctic hare. The fact that it lives in such unforgiving environments has actually helped out the arctic wolf. This is because it's had little interference from humans and is in fact the only subspecies of wolf that isn't threatened. They are also known to be fearless in the face of man as many populations have had little interaction with humans and personally I think they are the prettiest wolf species and they are definitely a top arctic predator. But that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this slightly festive video. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and I thank you for supporting me this year. But until next time, goodbye.